Hey guys, we're going to try something a little different with this project. So I'm going to try sort of a vlog style uh, to get this to sort of document my process with this. But uh, I'm sure you all know from the uh, plenty of hours I spent making like thumbnails and coming up with a title for this crazy thing that we're making Transistor. I love this sword. It is my like bucket list of swords. And we're going to go all the way to the nines with it, and I'm really excited about this project. So, with that said, let's get into a brief overview of how we're going to begin, and some of the construction stuff. And uh, we've been doing a lot of pre-work, a lot of pre-testing, and uh, we're going to really be starting this build in earnest today. Alright, so I've cleaned the workshop and it's no longer a disaster, but uh, the key components here are going to be... Uh, this is a uh, Schedule 40... Um, I think inch, inch pipe here. Um, this is going to be the grip. There's going to be some 3D printed pieces on here. This is three quarter inch clear PVC. Uh, first time working with this stuff and so far I like it. Um, this is going to be part of the internal workings and the internal, uh, whatchamahoosits. Uh, we've got acrylic here. Now this is going to be a unique project for me because... Um, I don't get to use the laser, uh, for a lot of it, um, so it's a lot of hand shaping on the acrylic here, and we only have a limited amount of material in this size, so it's gonna get tricky, but, uh, we've been, we got a plan. I got a plan. This is, uh, our test piece. This is ugly, as sin, but it was put through its paces, and, uh, this is how we determined how we're gonna color it. This is how we're going to glue it together and all of that jazz. Uh, that's about the size of the outside of it and all of that stuff. Um, so over here, I have all of the other components we're going to be starting with. Um, obviously, we've got a lot of 3D printing to do. The file's not done yet, but uh, I had to go buy one of these guys. Uh, this is a spray gun. Not a high-volume, low-pressure spray gun. Just a regular spray gun. I did some looking on the internet, and it, I determined that this is going to do what I need. So, we have crystal gel, which is um, something we bought to test for cosplay. Uh, it, it doesn't work for cosplay. It might work for foam, I don't know, but um, Flexbond, I think it's Flexbond. Flexbond is the same company. Uh, this stuff says it uh, does a bunch of crazy stuff. It's basically... A, a gel uh, so it's pretty thick we're gonna thin it and throw it through the gun but it's used in uh, those things uh, the theaters so theaters use it for a coating you can coat a bunch of stuff with it I'm excited to play with this I mean I paid 50 bucks for this tub so we're gonna find uses for it <laughs> but that's how we got that green color on there uh, with a bit of acrylic pigment because one of the use cases they really put me over the top on spending money on it was that it it's used to make pseudo stained glass on acrylic, which is that. Uh, we've obviously got some LEDs. We've got our cutter for uh, the acrylics. And uh, this is how we're gluing the acrylics together. This is a uh, fast set uh, Cygrip 16. Um, it's a bit of a gel versus uh, this stuff, which is right now just this like knockoff stuff, but we'll. Once we use this up, it's going to be converted to Cygrip 3, which I have in containers. But, uh, yeah, so that's going to be used to bond the acrylic together. We've got a bunch of, uh, it's just going to be a bunch of stuff. So that's sort of our starting set of components. We're going to get to uh, doing some stuff. Okay, so we're going to mark directly onto the paper here. Uh, we don't want to leave this on till the last possible second. So I've marked up 8 inches from here. So we got 8 inches here. And uh, welcome to the land of multiple dimensions. Um, listen, <clears throat> if you're strictly unified or metric, uh, then uh, buckle up. This is going to be fun. So uh, we know that that arc length is 195 millimeters. So I'm taking this piece of scrap crap here. And uh, I marked a line here at 195 millimeters. Uh, so I forgot that my big ruler has both metric on either and standard on it okay so this hole should help quite a bit so again we're going to put our base here i know i have this nice hole so i'm not trying to do a bunch of stuff so 
Now, <clears throat> we can do this. If I utilize my space correctly. Okay, so I'm double checking to make sure that I can sweep this sort of through here and not hit anything. Uh, you guys are going to be spared from the horrendous noise that is my bandsaw. <laughs> Okay, so this next cut is extremely important, um, and I don't want anything to slip, so I've clamped it down as best I can. It's really tight in here. There's not a lot of space. We're not cutting a lot of material off. I could put this in a bandsaw, but it's really easy to get a really straight cut this way. But I'm going to use our scoring tool, and I'm going to score it, like, a lot. Um, and the reason being, this cut cannot screw up. If, in the process of snapping this, we get a crack, and it goes through this material, this whole piece is gone. Garbage. Well... It'll go into my scrap bin and be cut in the laser later. Get that just off that edge a little bit more. It might not be supported. Or it might be supported. So, let's try to snap a root. And I don't know if I can. And that's what I was afraid of, because it's such a shallow cut. It snapped okay, like we didn't damage the parts, but it's definitely going to get really hard to snap along this edge. There's just nothing to grab onto, um, so I could flip it, but then I'm putting all of the pressure on this piece, that's more likely to break. So what I'm going to do is use this score line as a pseudo guide, and it should help the blade sort of follow it in the bandsaw, so we're going to try to bandsaw this off. We're just going to straight cut this one. I put a line in it, so hopefully I don't screw it up. Wish me luck. All right, so we've got our first piece basically cut. This is great. I'm really excited that we're getting this far in this project. Um, there are some tricky bits coming up. But we need to make the jig that will go here and help me draw the perfect circles in the right sizes. Uh, luckily, so everything works out, I need exactly a 300 millimeter circle. Guess whose laser does? 302 millimeters. This guy. Before we get to lasers, I thought I'd show you some invisible printing. Uh, this was a better idea when I thought you could see it. But right here, we're using natural PLA. It's being printed. I am printing four tests. Uh, each one is a different infill pattern. It has zero outline perimeters, and it has no top and no, no, um, well, one layer of bottom just to make sure it sticks. I don't think that's necessary, but anyway, this is a test because I need to print a bunch of these pieces, and they all have to mesh seamlessly, and I just wanted to test different infill patterns at 100% for light diffusion, so we'll hear about this later when it's done and maybe visible. Say hello to Agnes. She needs her trash taking out. But, um, yeah, you can see we've been cutting a lot of foam scale lately. <laughs> so, uh, this is Agnes. This is our resident laser extraordinaire. And uh, this is MDF. I'm going to be using MDF to cut this circle out of. And I've got to get it kind of close. So we're going to turn on all of the uh, accoutrements here. Um, so we've got air assist coming through here. And our exhaust is here. But uh, I'm going to use some magnets to very, very safely uh, disable interlocked, and uh, okay, so I'm pretty good on that side, and uh, on this side as well, so uh, let's cut a circle. That's really smoky. I'm going to shut the lid, and we'll come back when it's done. I love the smell of laser cutter in the morning, or more importantly, I'm sure my neighbors love smelling this at like 9 o'clock at night. Anyway, here is our giant circle of destiny. I screwed up. Um, I didn't really screw up. I did screw up. Um, we're going to cut a half circle of this as well, but we'll keep this because we will need it. So, uh, yeah, let's take this over there. Okay, 
So, I think we're just going to call it here for this one. This is going to be episode one, or basically day one of the build. Uh, mostly because, uh, this... Totally useless. Um, anyway, it's not going to help us. Um, essentially, I screwed up. In my head, and in here, I even have visual aid. See this? Well, you can't see it because I have to hold it right. Uh, this thing, as we have already seen, see that circle? That one. That circle is 290 millimeters wide. Uh, in software, that's what it is, but the gap around it is 300 millimeters because it's a 5 millimeter sort of gap around it. I cut a 300 millimeter circle because that's the arc that will be going on our piece of acrylic. Makes sense, right? Uh, no. Because we can't... Because it's essentially a circle with the sides cut off, there's no way to effectively sort of line it up. Uh, I may think about it. Now that I'm thinking about it, there may be a way to... How do I say this? Do doodle it on. I may be able to draft it onto the circle. I'll have to think about that uh, for a little bit. But what I might just do is build the jig in software in Fusion tomorrow morning and then just cut a proper jig because we're going to use it on both sides. It's going to be on the top part and the bottom, and we have two more pieces to cut for the top and the bottom. Oh, that jazz. Anyway, um, this is basically the end. Uh, thank you for sticking around for our transmit transistor. Transmitter. I'm uh, thinking a lot about radio engineering recently. Um, this is Transistor, uh, episode one of the build. Hopefully you guys are liking sort of this behind-the-scenes look of my process and my craziness. But uh, we're going to keep working. We're going to try to make this and knock it out of the park. So I don't know how long this series is going to go. It's going to go until the thing is done.